some names like Amazon, which has added $674 billion in market cap this year. Is it out of hand? Is this too much? And there, I think it's a little too much, and maybe that's why you're coming to me first. As you know, I might be a little provocative here and say you can trim, okay? This doesn't have to be a digital on-off decision of you're either all in or you're all out of tech. Obviously, tech has fundamental business tailwinds that are propelling these stocks higher, but the top five stocks in the S&P 500 are 23%, okay? So unless you're used to running a 20-stock portfolio, which most people aren't, that means those names are overweight in your portfolio. If you trim them, let's say you take two percentage points off of Microsoft and Apple, bring those both down to four percentage points, now you're running a 25-stock portfolio, and you know what? You've taken four percentage points out of the tech area. You can spread that wherever you want. You can put it into healthcare, which is on fire. You can go into energy stocks. I mean, look at them roll it, r running today. My point being is that it is okay to say, look, things are hot. This isn't 1999, it's not a mania, it's not a bubble, but you are supposed to manage the risk in your portfolio and trim from time to time. All right, so Bryn, let's take it from there. Is this, is this time to do that? Um, Kramer today says moves, he tweeted, uh, he tweeted actually yesterday afternoon, moves like we're seeing in Microsoft and Tesla and Amazon are truly insane and unlike any I've ever seen in my life. It is now the time to take some profits in some of these stocks as he admits that in his charitable trust, they trimmed some Amazon. Well, I mean, I think that from a portfolio construction standpoint, you can always take your own cost basis where you are today and make those moves on the margin. But from the broader narrative of, you know, people saying this is reminiscent to 1999 or the late 90s, I mean, I think within the animal spirits of people being excited about certain names, yeah, it's probably been 20, 25 years some people have been really excited about names. But to get out of tech, to underweight tech, um, to move into the other sectors of the market, I just don't think that's t the time to do it. I think it's more time to lean into the, s some of these names. And once again, be ready for a sell-off. But I think it's really important for investors to understand there's two decisions, the buy and the sell. And if people get out here, you have to think, when are you going to get back in? And just, I've been in the business for 25 years. I think that's always a really tough call of trying to get back in and time something. And more than not, it runs away from you. Weiss, I want you to listen to what else Kramer had to say. And this is from this morning's show. Maybe some comparisons to 1999 that some are trying to make. Let's listen to what Jim said today. Fairly provocative, and we can kick it around on the other side. This is animal spirits like I've never seen. And I don't, uh, those gains that we had with Cisco and Intel are nothing like this. I, I think that maybe yeah. index money, 60% of the money is indexed in this market. They're not sellers. The insiders are not sellers. The ETF buyers are insane. They come in, they blitz stocks. And you get people who think that stocks uh, only go up and they attract a lot more money. All right, Weiss, what, what do you make of that? It's not like Jim's trying to say this is 1999. In fact, he's saying yeah. it's not in right. the fact that back in 1999, you had clown companies that were, were going and adding tremendous amounts of market cap. <laughs> now you have real big companies adding market cap at, you know, uh, astonishing levels. It, it is worth taking a look at, at the comparisons of the two and at least acknowledging, are we, are we getting way too frothy in, in some of these tech names? Well, a couple of things. There's no resemblance to 99 in my view. Those companies that went up didn't even have business plans. They didn't have business models. It, there's just no relevance to that. Uh, what Jim does say in terms of animal spirits, I agree there is some here. But let's take a look at the dynamics, at the technicals underpinning the market. There are fewer than 50% of the number of stocks that we had in 99. The number of tradable, of available U.S. equities has been cut in more than half. Then, as Jim correctly points out, you have the index players come in. Index players generally buy and hold forever. And that's 60% of the market. So you've got to further shrink the market by another 50%. So the scarcity value is there for stocks. 